Magnetism is amazing. I love magnets. Been playing with these things for about, gosh, going on 45 years now. This is a classic toy with a magnetic twist to it. The thing about magnets is that the force they exert on each other is, is invisible. You can't see it with your eye. You can detect the magnetic field with the use of another magnet. Oftentimes a compass or some other kind of magnetic device can point to the different aspects of the magnetic field, north and south, we've come to call them. What seems to be harder for people to understand is electromagnetism. When you put electricity through a coil of wire, it can create a magnetic field. The current goes through a wire and it creates a magnetic field. This was uh, first uh, explained by a guy by the name of James Maxwell, who wrote four simple equations that kind of unified electricity and magnetism. If you've got a magnet going through a wire, it makes electricity, and if you've got electricity going through a wire, it creates magnetism, electromagnetic energy. And the north and south is a function of the direction of current. By reversing the current, I can reverse the magnetic field. So now it's possible using electricity that alternates from positive 60 to negative 60 volts, uh, potential difference of 120 volts, AC current, the stuff that comes out of your wall sockets, that we can put that into a coil of wire, we can create a magnetic field that's also alternating north-south, north-south. And a magnet struggles to make sense of that. It wants to be attracted and repelled at the same time. And so it goes a little crazy. The problem occurs when people take a coil of wire and put it near the alternating magnetic field. It will create electricity in the wire. And depending on the parameters, different things about it, substantial amount of electricity. We get about 48 volts in this coil of wire. A guy by the name of Nikita Tesla, who was working with Tom Edison, he had the idea that you could generate these strong alternating magnetic fields, and that by placing a coil of wire, Households could get that electricity and actually use it in their households. The concept was free energy, that the energy could be sucked right out of the air by coils of wire. On YouTube, you see many videos where people are generating electricity and they're getting a, a lot of voltage. And sometimes they use a, a system that only starts with 9 volts and they're able to get a lot of volts out of it. And they're under the misconception that they're actually creating this free energy. They're getting free energy. They fail to take into account the other aspect of electrical energy, not just the voltage, the potential, but the current to the flow of charge. And it's voltage times current that produces power, electrical energy. If we hook up meters, we can see the energy being used to create this magnetic field. It's going to be 111 volts times 3.56 amps. And then we can calculate the amount of energy being generated by our coil, 45 volts, at 0.249 amps. We see that a great deal more energy is needed to generate this magnetic field than can be taken from it by a simple coil of wire. We can get a lot of voltage at the sacrifice of current. This is actually called a Tesla coil, simply a transformer. It's a coil of wire plugged into the wall. By having two coils of wire, one of them is plugged into the wall, and the other one is engaging that, you can step up the voltage. It's called a transformer. It transforms one voltage times current to another voltage times current. As the voltage increases, the current drops. In an ideal system, voltage times current on one side equals voltage times current on the other side. Of course, there's always loss to electrical resistance and other factors. This is a Jacob's Ladder, and it uses the same principle. Plug it into 110, there's a coil of wire, creates a magnetic field. Another coil of wire with many more turns of wire gets a much higher voltage out. In this case, uh, 10,000 volts. 
Now those 10,000 volts, if I dared to attach an amp meter to it, would have proportionately fewer amps. Not nearly as dangerous, but equally as cool, is my rechargeable toothbrush. It's a rechargeable battery in it, but I don't have to plug it in. As I bring the toothbrush and place it on the base, without making any electrical contact at all, it begins to recharge. Coil of wire in the base, coil of wire in the toothbrush, and an induction field is created that charges the toothbrush. I'm going to plug this into the wall, so I'm using more energy than I'm getting, but it's convenient and it's water safe. So amazing as magnets are, and especially electromagnets, you cannot get more energy out of the system than you put in. But they're fun to play with.